Father, everyone standing here whose horn you are exhorting, anoint them tonight with a fresh oil. Can we be quiet in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's an oil coming now for influence, and it will make you an answer to make you a cure. It will make you a balm in Gilead. Father, everyone standing here, whom's one you are exalting? Because you are anointed with the fresh oil. It doesn't matter the sector you have placed them. You have sent us to shape this world. Lord, I release that grace now. I release that grace now. Ushers, please help them. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. That fire is engulfing this place. Ushers, help them. From the left to the right, from the front to the back to the overflows. Receive that grace now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Let horns be exalted. Let horns be exalted. Let horns be exalted. Hey, hey, ha. <laughs> you know, that's why sometimes we chant. Because when you see something, you say, Ah, 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 Father, please let's be seated. When we finish this teaching tonight, your life will change forever. Because the dimension of power, thank you, sir. I want to look into it's not just power to cast out devils. The dimension of power I want to look into tonight. It's not just power to heal the sick. All of those dimensions of power are for believers people who just know jesus and believe in jesus he said these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils he said they lay hands on the sick the sick shall recover so a believer who is born again today if his whole trust is in jesus he will be able to cast out devils and heal the sick but the kind of power we are looking at in this conference is a power that builds kingdom because your nation and your borders are being overtaken by darkness and the darkness that is overtaking your land is clothed with advanced civilization advanced technology and so only wise men will look into it and know that there is a signature of demons there now this thing i have shared with you it doesn't only happen in the realm of god even in darkness it happens if you study ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 where paul said be strong in the law and in the power of his might you will now understand that the reason Paul was advising us to be strong is because darkness too is doing its own recruitment. Because if we don't wake up, when the recruitment of darkness is over, they will overrun us. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because when this job is finished, a warfare will always take place. Every generation must fight her warfare. And you didn't choose the battle, the battle chose you. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I didn't know when I entered the wrestling bar. I didn't know when I went to a ring. That means they, they turned the territory to a ring. If you don't fight, you can't conquer it. We will subdue you on the land. He said, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. When you study those words, you now understand the organogram of the, demon, of the devil. The word principalities, coincidentally, is also the word al -Kay. It also means governor and first in rank. So when the devil wants to take a territory, the first set of spirits, princes they send, are called alkays. They are principalities. They come into the land, and what they do is that, you know, because they are not men, the way God works is that he raises men as alkays in territories. But because these ones are not men, they don't have the legal authority over the land. So what they do is that when they come into the land, they look for men that should have the stature of alkays but are not serving God. 
and they infiltrate them. So their job is to recruit men that have legality so that they will bring legitimacy to them in those territories. So when our king comes here, for example, he will censor us and he will be watching. You woke up, you say you had a dream. The dream came to pass. This is a prophet. He will put you in a cycle. Another person had a vision. I saw this person die though. What happened? The person dies. Ah, this is a seer. Another person wakes up. Ah, I'm seeing this person prosper. I don't know why it looks as if and prosperity come. He will now gather all of them together. When he gathers them together, the recruitment project is to create something that will change their soul structure. So you see a prophet who is very sensitive in the spirit wakes up and suddenly he, he starts liking pornography. And he says he loves, see, no, it's a program. A principality is about to recruit you. And in our own case now, it's perversion. A man who is supposed to be a prophet wakes up and says, I'm feeling like a woman. And then he says, it's my right. It's how I feel. He doesn't have wisdom. It's a falling person. He, in the spirit realm, he's dwarfed. So the principality is dwarfed him. But they need his throne in order to bring legislation over the land. And the moment he does that perversion, his soul is seared forever. And so when they recruit such people, what they use them to do is that they convert them to become messengers. So they are the ones who transmit the agenda of those spirits. But you see, the spirit will not take the risk of just recruiting because they can change their mind. So when the principality finishes, a power comes. The word power, coincidentally again, is the word exousia. To show you that what is happening in light is also happening in darkness. When the power comes, what the power does is that that thing you are beginning to do, he will put a code there and it will become an addiction. So you started before by, you just love a football team and there's nothing wrong with watching football. On Saturday you throw, you watch your match and come back. But after six months, any Saturday you don't watch football, it's like cocaine. Your body is turning. Even if you are in a Bible study, you are checking. No scripture will enter your spirit again. As it's entering here, it's going here. You will now say, is there a toilet here? You go out and your toilet becomes stadium. Because a power has come. It has become an addiction. You looked upon a naked person and you said, you looked again. Before you know what is happening, tomorrow you are looking for sites where there are naked pictures. A power has come. It will put an addiction there and it will stamp it. So that thing that you used your will to do casually, it will take another power to take you out of it. Even the day you wake up and say, I don't want again, you will now discover that I don't want again doesn't exist there. The voice of God is not loud, it's distinct. You will have many voices in your soul, but when you separate yourself, the voice of God will become clearer. And when you come with that voice, it becomes a weapon. It becomes a skill. It becomes capacity for you to shape your land. And so the second requirement is separation. The third requirement for you to wield this power, and I'm saying this so you will know, because most of you came for the meeting, you are waiting for when the atmosphere is charged. They say, take, take, take. That one is not for building kingdom. I can stop talking now and start that one. It won't take me five seconds. But that's not for building kingdom. That's for addressing circumstantial issues. That's for quickening hunger. But if you want to handle the power to shape a land, to talk and the source of men are realigned. You must follow these paths. It is something God entrusts a generation with. And so from separation, you now come to the place of humility and brokenness. Anybody who sees God is humble. And for God to exalt your heart, that must become a requirement. They say God resists the proud, but he giveth more grace. Because this power he wants to give you, you can't, you can't go with pride and arrogance. Do you know what it means when you talk? A whole parliament changed their mind. All the men, some studied in Oxford, some studied in all your big universities. They have experience, they are, they are politicians, they have ambition. And then you sit on your altar, you speak, and it changes. You know that level of power. What that means is that if somebody annoys you and you say you are mad, whether you are serious or not, you'll be mad. And so it will take a high level of brokenness to be able to wield that power. And thank God we are talking in an RCCG. Because one of the persons who have modeled this dimension so much is our father in the Lord that is you. You now wonder why you cannot say it's this gift, it's that gift. But any nation, any continent you go to, there is influence. Only the man is like a river. They go to America, it is a cloud. Come to England, it's a cloud. Go to Antarctica, anywhere he goes to, there is like a, a move. An individual is like a move of the spirit. And then when you check his life, the only thing that stands out is brokenness. Because that kind of authority is too heavy for a man. 
And so God will have to kill and break you for that power to rest on you. When he wanted to exhort Jacob, yes, he was smart. Yes, he was the candidate for the blessing. But you see, the guy was too swift. And so the angel wrestled with him all night. You can't carry this power when you are walking in your own ways. He had to break his staff. It was on the staff that he became a prince. So every time he moves and it depends on the staff, it will remind him that your authority is not in you. So he had to lean on the staff. It was from that staff that he said, gather around me, you sons of Jacob. I will tell you the things that will befall you. He was not shouting. This power is not shout. You, when you speak, heaven resonates. He looked at Reuben. He said, you are the first of my strength. You are supposed to be the most excellent among them all. He said, but as unstable as water, you will not prosper. He was not prophesying. He was shaping their destiny. Anything he said became a law. What Reuben should have carried, he turned to Judah. That's how Israel was built. Israel was built by the speakings of the patriarchs. He looked at Judah and he said, The scepter shall not depart from you. Neither the lawgiver from in between thy feet until Shiloh comes. And Jesus had to come in the tribe of Judah because just Jacob spoke. He looked at Ephraim and Manasseh. He said, Let the name of Israel be named upon you. And he turned them to part of Israel. He gave them an inheritance. These were supposed to be grandchildren. Because of that statement, he removed Joseph. He turned Joseph to two. So what he did was to give Joseph the right of the firstborn. So he replaced Joseph and Judah with Reuben. Joseph became two men. Because one man spoke. His words were law. Imagine what will happen if ten of such people wake up in this land. Ten. You will now know that it's not the number of churches that shifts the land. It is the number of the ranking men. And so when a man understands that he has eternal life, the way he lives his life is not to look at Kardashians and leave it. It's to look at the angelic realm. It's to look at the realm of God. And anything that happened in that realm, he can begin to mirror it. So when we are praying and seeking God, our goal is to download that word into this world. It is the power of that word that you will stand on to speak and parliament will change their mind. Because you are speaking as a prince from another, from another dispensation. But you see, many Christians are not aware that they have the life of God. So they are not learning from God. They are not studying what that word represents to mirror it here. And so when you look at us, we reflect people that are living a falling life. Most of us dress like musicians that are sponsored and inspired by demons. Whereas we are supposed to be the example to the world. We should manifest things that they don't believe is possible. So they should be coming for our meetings to check whether what we say is true. In Catherine Kuman's meeting those days, they brought doctors and journalists because they claimed that they said what she claimed is a lie. So most people who come to church didn't come to hear the word of God. They came to see the wonder of God. And when Catherine Kuman is done worshiping, the doctors who are not part of her team will come to discredit her miracles. And what does she do? She just brings the presence of God and suddenly bones receive strength. Eyes begin to see. All these people were tested before service. When they say they are healed, they are tested again and they discover that they are healed. Now, the doctor is wondering, if you have cancer, you need to be exposed to chemotherapy. What kind of chemotherapy or radiation? Where did it come from? You now tell them that this atmosphere in this service is not air. This atmosphere in this service is called Holy Ghost. And if you are able to connect, you can draw something. But you see, the reason heaven can open to earth is because you know that you have the life of the age to come. This is the first protocol in the school of power the power that has the capacity to build god's kingdom the second thing about that power is separation when you know that you have god's attributes and god's essence and god's resources in you the next thing you will do is that you will pay the price to abandon this age because what this age will try to do is to lure you with lust with distraction and with many tendencies and so anybody who wants to walk the power of god must pay the price of separation go and check the bible from the old testament into the new testament in genesis 12 from verse 1 to 3 he told abraham get out of thy country get out of thy kindred get out of thy father's house because you cannot wield the power i'm bringing you into if you allow this your age to disciple you and it continues like that when moses was supposed to enter this realm of power the bible said god drew him to horeb the mountain of god he had to abandon egypt to come to horeb when John was to manifest this power in Luke 180, the Bible said he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. Even Jesus, when he was to manifest this power, the Bible said he went to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. If you don't pay the price of separation, you will be too distracted. The noise in your soul will be too much 
for you to handle the utensils and the equip equipment of eternity to build eternity on earth. Paul the apostle said, I was in Samaria. He went to a city. He was carried to Arabia for many years. It was in Arabia that God taught him the gospel of grace. So most of us, we have the tools of power, but our mind is clustered. We have not paid the price of separation. We are still involved doing everything that everybody is doing. You say you are an ambassador, you are a custodian to shape this kingdom, and you are following everybody to do everything. When they are in birthdays, you are there. When they are in football matches, you are there. When they are in the club, you are there. When will you have time to hear the whispers of eternity with the noise in your soul? How can you hear? How can you see the patterns? For Moses to see the pattern that was on the mount, he had to ascend Sinai. The Mount Sinai is over 6,000 feet tall. But it's until you separate, you can't hear those whispers. They are not loud. They are only distinct. Because one man can be bigger than a congregation. But it will take the depths of brokenness and, and humility. And this is what the devil will never let us have. And so what he does is that he gives us an iPad, he gives us a car and turns us to peacocks. And so somebody who should be a prince in heaven is taking pride on a, a jeep. <laughs> a jeep. And the realm where you are supposed to function, they don't drive there. You are supposed to know how to mount up with wings like the eagles into the galaxies of God. They can't, no jeep can take you there. And then you substitute standing in the corpse of God with pride for a car. So what happens is that the ancient one resists you. He says, go down. You can't have that kind of power. And then when you pass the test of brokenness, you must pass the test of purity. In the test of purity, nothing matters to you only god because the reason men are corrupt is because something else becomes more important to them than god so they can compromise to get those things but if you know that power is in view you will pass that test that was what joseph knew when potiphar's wife threw herself at him he said no i can't do it genesis 39 verse 9 how can i do this if one sin against god and then you think you you don't appear in egypt you grow in egypt and one of the dimensions of growth must be purity. You, do you know how old this civilization is? At least the buildings will suggest to you that your wisdom is not enough to address the foundation. You come, you see a building, they say this building has been standing for 1,000 years. You can't even remember your ancestors. If you go back one, now is it the certificate you got 5, 10, 15 years ago you want to use to address the land? It means the land is older than your brain. And the way you connect to a wisdom more ancient than the foundation is when you wear the garment of purity so that God can relate with you. You say, I am of a purer eyes. My eyes cannot behold iniquity. My eyes is too pure. If you want to represent my kingdom and build my kingdom, you must be pure. You say, in a great house, there are many vessels. You say, some are unto honor, some are unto dishonor. But the key to a vessel unto honor is not in what is made of. It's not, not because you are gold, silver, wood, or hay. He says, if a man purges himself, that is the man that is meet to be used of the master. See, we come with bitterness. We come with malice. We come with jealousy. We come with anger. We come with hatred. We come with lies. And then we are talking about holding scepters that angels held. Some of the scepters and the mantles we will use to affect this land were the same mantles that John Knox used. You need to know that your garment must be spotless. Because those, those things are too ancient. And they are too glorified to touch it with iniquity. So the fourth requirement is purity. And then the fifth requirement is the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Your mouth must be full of praise. Perpetually. By the time you get here, then what God will do is that he will now share his heart with you, his burdens. What you build with are the burdens of God, not your creativity. All of us can gather, somebody can catch a burden for revival. Another person can catch a burden for prosperity of the church. Another person can catch a burden for different. So it's those burdens that separate us into departments. This is why there's no basis for jealousy. But for you to get to that point where God shares his burdens with you, you must have journeyed many routes. And so in a conference like this, when we talk about power and glory, we need to know that power is for building Zion. Because it's when God builds Zion that he appears in his glory. We need to know that power is for shaping Zion. Because Zion is about to be drowned. 
by worldliness, by dark princes that have brought wisdoms that are dark in nature. And the sons of men that are supposed to be the servants of God have gone astray. Because these spirits have found the vibration of our soul and they have laid us away from the service of God. But this is a conference where everybody will come back to the altar and tell the Lord, help me. I am ready to give up everything. Use me for your glory. Use me. Let it not be heard that I walked through this land and there was no witness for God. Let it not be heard that I lived in Scotland for 30 years and I did not have any contribution to that civilization. What did I do here? And so when you are talking about glory, one of the elements of glory is purity and wisdom. So when a man carries glory, you will recognize that glory by the quality of his life reflected through purity and the quality of wisdom by which he operates. So wisdom and purity is a dimension of glory because that's the head of God. Now when you study deeper, you will now discover again that the Bible speaks of the eyes of God. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 14, scriptures makes us understand that his eyes, from his eyes, issued out fire. And so there is something about God that purges anything that appears in his realm. That creates intolerance for iniquity. And so when Isaiah met him and the glory appeared in Isaiah chapter 6, the first thing that happened was that the seraphims had to touch him with the coals of fire to purify him. Because he said, Thou, O Lord, out of a purer eyes, your eyes cannot behold iniquity. He speaks of the eyes of God. And by the time we, our journey on earth is over, he will have to look upon us. And that's where the reward system of Zion will come from. Because for you to receive reward in heaven, he will have to look at you. And when he looks at you, that fire will come out. It is that fire that will purge you and also refine what you have done. So whatever is not done in purity will be burnt off. Now, if you understand the glory of God, you will now begin to relate with God with fear and trembling. Because there is a part of his glory that is called his eyes. That eyes issues fire. That's why I said, we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28, he said, let us serve God with fear and reverence. So, when a man understands glory, one of the things you will discover in the life of that man is reverence and fear. Because he knows that the elements of glory has to do with fire that issues from the eyes of God. And that's not all. If you study Habakkuk chapter 3, the Bible speaks of the hand of God. You will now discover that God does not need hand to eat food like you and I, not to write. When God wants to write, it can issue out of him as a flame of fire. When the, when the, when, when the Ten Commandments were written, it said the finger of God came out like fire and inscribed, inscribed the laws on the tablets of stone. So he doesn't need to function the way we function. But you see, the way the book of Habakkuk put it is that he said from his hand, he said the horn came out and he said there is the hiding place of his power. So when you are talking about the hand of God, you are talking about the power of God. And that power is locked in a mystery called the hand. So the hand of God reveals his power. That's why many times you hear God saying, I will stretch my hand. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 20, he said, I will strike Egypt with my hand. And I will strike them with all my signs and my wonders. Because that's where power is. So power is also a component of glory. When the disciples prayed in Acts chapter 3, one of their prayer points was that you will stretch forth your hand and let signs and wonders be done. So when you find a man of glory, power goes with him. Because you have stepped into the courts of a power. You will do many, many, many resolutions. First of January, you say, I write all of this resolution. You will now discover that resolutions cannot function where a power is. On the 2nd of January, you have broke 80% of your resolution. You will now tell yourself, Kai, this is no easy. That's when you will know you need help. Because you didn't know that a territory was being shaped. You didn't know that a civilization was being built. And wise men in the spirit and wise spirits are in the business of recruitment. See, this is why we tell Christians that Christianity is not going to be taken serious until consecration becomes a law. It's only among Christians that you find a Christian who is secular. The people that work for the devil, you will never find a worldly one. There's no worldly witch. You only have worldly pastors and worldly prophets. How many witch have you seen? Who is into fashion? They wear Gucci watch, Gucci chain, Gucci garment, Gucci shoe, and a witch is... No, they don't have that time. They know that they are building a kingdom. Now, there's nothing wrong in dressing well, but if you are so obsessed about dress until you become a fashion star, it means you are not part of those who are building. So what powers do is to create addictions. And when they create those addictions, you will remain there. 
you can't break out again. The whole idea is to make you their messenger because you are the one who has legitimacy in the territory. They create energies, create motions in the environment. A young lady wakes up and says, she likes skimpy things. What's wrong? Is it a sin? No, it's not a sin. The problem is that you'll soon become a messenger. And so she dresses naked and then seduction rests upon her. She's now a recruiter for the demonic realm. And she may never know that she's a messenger. Because a power is at work. A power. Because when you check the cities they built, you'll discover that most of the things we love doing, they are the signatures of those cities. Either Egypt or Babylon, one must be there. Because Babylon is the land of the harlot. And there's a disposition of the harlots. But it will take demonic intelligence to raise people who are messengers in the harlotry order. Now, when the power creates that addiction, the spirit will still not rest. What they will do is that the rulers of darkness will come. The word rulers is the word cosmos kratos. So their job is to create laws on the earth realm, in the cosmos. So they understand the, the motions of the cosmos. So they are called cosmos kratos. Their job is to make sure that that thing you are doing is not just an addiction. It becomes your way of life. It becomes your character. It becomes your personality. So that even if you are able to stop that thing, you have become that thing. So it's beyond what you are doing. It's now who you are. So they encode it into your soul until you become it. If God wants to visit a land, these beings will be judged. If you study Exodus chapter 12 verse 12, the Bible said, God said tonight, I will come into Egypt and I will judge the gods of Egypt. So Pharaoh was not the king. Pharaoh was the puppet. When I read the Bible, it scares me. You know why? Because sometimes the Bible will talk about a whole generation and you will see only three names. <laughs> Imagine, he said the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel alone had four kings in more than 65 years. But only Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and the kings that God punished were mentioned. What about the multitude that went to the land? They were not worthy to be mentioned. And so when this world comes to an end, there are many nations that when the chapter is open, they can say Abadim. And when they say Abadim, from 2010 to 2040, they will now call five names. And then you're asking yourself, ah, but you, you touch the angel that is doing the roll call. You say, no, I, I was in Abadim in 2023. They say, no, we didn't see anything you did. We, we are calling those who are responsible for Zion. And you were not there. If God shows mercy, maybe you will be inside somebody. <laughs> they will now say, when, when Pastor Dapo was staring revival, you followed him for evangelism. So when we find Pastor Dapo, we'll find you. Ah, no. When the role is called, let your name be there. And you will not just be mentioned, you will be there as a significant entity. Let, there be, let it be recorded that God achieved something because you came. And when you are living, that will become your heritage for a generation. You can live that thing you caught in God for many generations. The reason we are here today is because a man called Pa Akindayomi caught something. And when he was going, he looked among the people and he found a young man that had passion. He gave him. And that young man too is over 80 now. That means patterns will still be handed. And you, we, we think it's about house, car, wife, children. No. There's something happening in Zion. Roles are being called. Purposes are being administered. Kingdoms are being built. The reason you came and the reason you are gifted is because you have a part to play. And life will count if you play your part. Because your part has already been apportioned. Your choice is what determines whether you will be relevant or not. Because your choice must be that you played your part. And so you find it and you live to fulfill it. You see, we are strange beings, but we must grow into our shape in the spirit. There are people in this land that they are boarding as children. So you can hear that they have passed a law that children can choose any gender they want. And you say, ha, what is happening in this nation? Ha, God of mercy, help us. Oh, oh Father. The... <laughs> and you say that and it's over. But there's another person that will see that and he will weep for two years. Even him doesn't know why he's weeping. But he goes home, he cannot sleep. Because the same heartbeat God has for children, he now puts that heartbeat on that man. So the way God is feeling, that's how that man will feel. So that man is God's battle axe in that territory. Because the only way God can do something about the matter is for such men to stand as witnesses and functionaries of earth representing the interests of heaven. And so if God wants to affect that territory, 
those are the answers he will send you know many times we think when god answers prayers a cloud comes from heaven no most of the times when god answers prayer men emerge because men are the carriers of the answers of god how many things did you pray for and came from the, the air to you most of the things you prayed for when they appeared how did they appear they appeared in the shape of men and so men become god's errand depending on the stature they have built in the spirit so you will not be pet up you are working for a kingdom that is yonder that's what power is meant for it's not just for us to come to church and fascinate ourselves it's not to come to church and be excited it's to shape a land you are in the university that's the greatest opportunity to mix with other races ask our students who are here most of them have interacted one person in the university here may have interacted with more whites than some of you who are in this land for 15 years but he will not know why he's there he or she thought he's there just to get a certificate but you are there as a messenger so while you are you are doing well in your career you shake a chinese person manda cluster fretto prakatua you check you shake an asian mambro nasiga you shake a russian liga baragato bantakia when they are playing basketball you go there you are not playing you are just walking around the pitch you are initiating these ones every one of them will have an encounter and the basketball lasted for two hours you tongued for two hours you prophesied for two hours when they finish praying playing everybody go but you came for an initiation program they will not know you do that for three months after a while somebody will be in this room jesus will appear because you have built an atmosphere wise men wise men wise men must be born and so we know why power is given do you think your words are given to you for communication there are many ways of communicating without talking sir the eyes can send information the heart can send information so words are not just for communication it's for shaping territories it's for establishing the dominion of god and so if you are wise you will know that when you vocalize you are emitting power for a specific reason and this conference will not be over until wise men are born let me show you five protocols of entering into the kind of power that shapes a city you know in the early church when persecution broke out they were praying for God to save them and God looked at them and was smiling save who all of you gathered in Jerusalem here how will the word be taken I sent you to all the walls you came and built the synagogue and you are here doing religion God kept quiet as one entered Samaria he went with power all of a sudden the city was taken now that person had so much power but church was too filled that all he had the opportunity to do was to serve food so a man who should be taking a city was a deacon serving food uh, do you want chicken do you want talking meanwhile he should be dispensing the Holy Ghost he should be raising cripples but because of administration he was locked in Jerusalem so when persecution came God didn't answer their prayers he kept quiet he said Philip went to Samaria he preached Christ there the city was filled with joy some went as far as Antioch that's how the Gentiles took over the gospel because everywhere we go we spread the fire we carry the presence we release the power this is why power is not something you beg for you were commissioned with it but when you find a king in the land he's just the administrator of the interest of spirits i will judge the god the moment the gods of egypt were judged the land was let loose and then when the rulers are done the spiritual wickedness will come what spiritual wickedness do is that they are the ones who close the gate when your assignment is over because the devil has no good thing in himself he will now give you a gift so that gift can be cancer it can be hiv <laughs> because the, the devil do give gifts but those are the kind of gifts you give the giftings of a spirit is consistent with his nature so the nature of this one is wickedness it's called poneria and so the lady has slept with many prophets and they have succeeded in making them to lose their prophetic calling so when she's graduating she will graduate with hiv as a token that she is a general in the messenger end. that's how kingdoms are built kingdoms so when we are talking power power is a serious business so when you see somebody comes and he says jesus demons leave people addictions are broken is because he came with power he is trying to reset the ordinances of the territory so these things are not a show it's a shaping of a territory 
So when we talk power, it's important to know why. Now when the devil builds these messengers, they, they too graduate in rank. A messenger grows into a witch, depending on the level of giftings he has. A witch and a wizard. Because the job of a wizard and a witch is to chant incantations. So at this point, you have become like a priest in that realm. You know, every believer goes out for soul winning to colonize people into the kingdom. That's what messengers do. But they don't preach their own message with words. They preach their messages with actions. Either through wickedness, through seduction, through fornication, through all of those things. There are many billionaires that are messengers. So they spend a lot of money. They build a pornographic site. They build a club. They are building things that will choke and darken the heart of men. That's just what they love doing. They are messengers. A point will come when they see that you are very creative and you are gifted. They will graduate you to become a witch or a wizard. So in addition to your inventions, they use you to cast enchantments. To chant. To, to release darkness over the land. And you can grow from there to become a warlock. A warlock is superior to a witch and a wizard. A warlock is a master of spares. So everything the devil wants to do, he has human agents that do them. And then you also have a sage. A sage is a teacher. He is so one with the spirit that he can teach the ways of the spirit. That's a sage. He can also impart those graces. Those days, where we came from in Africa, those of you who were not born here, but you came, you know what I'm saying. There are many sages. There are some that will tell you, cut this blade of grass and give me. When you give them, they will hold your hand and impart a power to you. You can cleanse scorpion bite. So when somebody is beaten by scorpion, you can hold the hand and the sting will go. A sage has that level of authority. Every city that is built is built by the cooperation of principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness with men who are either messengers, witches, wizards, warlocks and sages. And United Kingdom in particular, at least you know that those things are not far from the foundation. The reason you have God ventilating your land is because some men came and changed those laws. How many of you watch many? You know that many has something to do with the foundation of the United Kingdom. That means sorcery went to the foundation. And so anytime priesthood dies, that sorcery will wake up. Because sages, sages brought wisdom and shaped the land. So when you come to the UK and you can't pray, it's not because you are busy. Some laws were written into the land. You are responding to laws. Now, if you know anything that attacks your priesthood, you will fight it until you overcome it. Because it's not because you are busy. We have busy people in Africa too. Some of us too keep read God's schedule, but we pray. And in case your busyness does not affect you, there's a way the billing system run here. You know, in Africa, if you can't pay for light, they will cut your light. You will, you will stay in darkness. But here, they don't cut light. So you will be forced to walk and pay for the light. Because there's nowhere there will be no light. So they designed it in such a way that your bills must identify with you. <laughs> so if you need to do three shifts in order to pay your bills, you must do it. So it, it's a wisdom. It's an intelligence. They, when they were building the civilization, they built it in such a way that you will run through it like a rat race. Until when you finish running, you will now discover that you didn't achieve anything eternal. You know why you deal with demons easily? It's because they don't have bodies. They are illegal occupants in people. So when you come with anointing, when you come with presence, when you come with the name of Jesus, they will flee. But you see, when you meet a fallen angel, a fallen angel has a legitimate body to walk here. And he hinges on the Adamic power. So when he looks at you, he will contend with you over a territory. And so the reason you need wise men to build civilization is because this is a game of spiritual legalities. It's a game of spiritual legalities. If you violate the legalities of the realm, a demon may be cast out by the revelation of Jesus, but a fallen angel will fight you and bring cancer to your body. My brother was sharing with me the other time. He said there was a time he was doing two or three shifts. He came home for a few minutes to, to rest as he wanted to drink tea. He was active, but the cup fell from his hand because energy was gone. Cup fell. He now told himself, I will die, but I won't do two shifts again. <laughs> now, if you want to drink tea and cup fall, how can you now lift that hand in prayer for two hours? It means the lifting up of holy hands is not part of your existence. But the reason it's like that is because there was a warlock that looked 200 years later and said, immigrants will come to this land. And most of those immigrants are creative men. They are supposed to be ambassadors of the kingdom. So what I will do is that I will shape the civilization and create hope here. 
so when they enter they will enter a web a web of power and they will forget their god <laughs> and you didn't know you thought you had an open door god has blessed me there's an open door and you came you say thank god for my visa thank god for your visa but if you sink here it means you didn't know what was written concerning you because when you go back to zion you may discover that why those sages were walking god also was walking so when they were trying to open a door for you to enter god allowed them because there's a prophetic mantle on your life to shape the land so when you now come you need wisdom to align with the kingdom of god so you will know that it's not a door of opportunity to come and get a better job you came as an intercessor you came as a prophet you came as an apostle and until the land is shaped your purpose has not been fulfilled so you need to pray consistently to have the ability to withstand the devil all the time and then you have Iskus. Iskus is a product of not just revelation Iskus is a product of having exercised the word of god you see when the revelation comes into your spirit on the strength of that revelation you can manifest something but you see a man who eats the word of god every day until the word of god becomes his mindset the word of god becomes his philosophy the word of god becomes his way of life is stronger than a man who has one revelation from scripture and he uses it to achieve something the man who catches revelation from scripture has exousia he receives a revelation for healing and he starts working in healing he receives a revelation for for prosperity and he does he does one or two things and money comes but it's not consistent but there's another man who did not necessarily receive an instant revelation but he understands the covenant of giving and he doesn't feel anything he doesn't see an angel but he just gives consistently after 12 years after 10 years after seven years after five years after three years depending on how the holy ghost wants to regulate his life you now discover that that man enters a cruise mode in prosperity he cannot tell you how but there's a wisdom he operates by he doesn't even know how that wisdom came but it's because he has lived the word of god so people who operate in schools are not those who have a revelation of scripture they are those who live the word living the word may not look powerful but there's a power it generates that is stronger than dynamis you know the reason we study greek in scripture and hebrew is not to say those words it's because it helps us understand the word better because when you are reading power power you'll be seeing power power you think they are the same thing they are not the same thing so one person meditates on scripture or he attends a meeting somebody quotes a scripture he picks that scripture and does one exploit another person is reading the bible every day he's meditating on the bible every day and he's adjusting his life and he's just living that simple seemingly powerless life but after three years you see his life you see the level of progress and you cannot reconcile it and you are wondering how about this person who is quoting scriptures every day why is he not making progress like this this one is not catching revelations and preaching he's eating the word and he's living the word every day so he's stronger than the man who runs with one or two revelations and so there are certain men that have built so much stature that they represent different shapes and different dimensions of the territory now if we are talking power that builds kingdom men must grow to these ranks as you are seated here what is your burden for this land let's not talk scotland let's talk Aberdeen. what have you picked from the heart of god that is making god be, to be troubled god is so troubled and it's not just because somebody preached you into it you slept that's what you were thinking you woke up that's what you were thinking every time you go to the altar that's your prayer even when you wanted to pray something else you could do that's your body is because you have become an arcade at that point you are god's high commissioner you are God's governor to that territory. And if you reach that level, God can leave one million men to protect you. In fact, even death will become afraid of you. That's where the glory comes from. Have you read about Simeon? The moment he saw Jesus, he said, now I can depart in peace. My eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. So if Simeon wanted to die, he couldn't die. Because as far as God was concerned, if Jesus will come, he, unless Simeon is praying. So Simeon's altar was what opened the door for John. Simeon's altar was what made John prophesy the coming of the Christ. Simeon's altar was what empowered John the Baptist. So while John was raging with fire, he wasn't raging with fire because he had wisdom. He was raging with fire because Simeon was pumping intercession. It was Simeon's prayer that kept Mary a virgin. It was Simeon's prayer that made Mary discerning enough to see the angel. It was Simeon's prayer that caused Mary to be obedient and say, whatever I please the Lord, let it be done to me according to his will. Mary is not that wise somebody was shaping the spiritual pathway for the salvation to appear and the moment jesus came the guy was not nobody sent him an invitation because men don't know the people who do the works of god 
Only God knows those who do his works. And the moment Jesus was brought into the temple, the Bible says Simeon came into the temple by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Instantly. Probably he was eating. And the Holy Ghost said, this is not time to eat. This is the time of the convergence. That thing that we were transacting in the Spirit has appeared. Come quickly. We need the quorum to be complete. The angel Gabriel that brought the news is present. The father whom son was sent is present. The son is also present. But you are the representative of earth. So heaven's messengers are present. We need earth messengers. And if you are not there, the ceremony can't take place. And so Simeon was somewhere and the Bible said the Holy Ghost moved him. And the moment he came, he knew the child. Because they were the original parents of the child. <laughs> you think it was Mary. Mary was a container. The people who betted him by intercession, the guy came and when they saw him, there were many children in the temple, but he said, my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. And immediately he began to prophesy as an elder. He knew the shape of the realm. He knew why the child came. He said, this one is for the rising and the falling of many. He was saying things that were not written anywhere. At that point, as a wise man, he was reading the chronicles of heaven. I know this season. I know this time. I know there's an alignment order in the spirit and the salvation of humankind have come. At this point, past present and future have converged because if there's hope for men this is the moment and he knew the part that he played the moment he finished he knew that life counted for nothing he said now i can depart in peace they are called the wise men of god hey, uh. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah. that will affect circumstances and everybody will be happy but today I'm talking to custodians <laughs> because we are talking business of glory we are talking business of power and not just ordinary power power that shapes territories so that the agenda of God is not tr truncated in Scotland and here it's not you don't need many people you need few men do you know that when time ends the whole number of wise men that built all the civilization of the different era are the ones who will come to fight with Jesus. Both the ones that have gone to heaven and the ones that are on earth, the Bible says there will be 10,000. Glory and power is for building Zion. I don't know if there's anybody here who wants to be part of those who will build Zion. I don't know if there's anybody here who is saying, Lord, I didn't know that I came here as a builder of a kingdom. I didn't know that spirits were waging war in the spirit and you were depending on me. Now I know why I sing. Now I know why I'm beautiful. Now I know why I'm creative. It's not just to make pounds. Scottish pounds are made and spent. But the works of eternity, they pass the test of fire. They remain with you forever and ever. You will not travel with one pound. But everything you do for God, it will go waiting for you on the other side. And it will be the basis for your ranking in the world that is to come. This is what this power is about. Just in case you are here. I want to read this something now. <laughs> Do you know why I thought like this, sir? When I was driving into this place, the Lord whispered to me, He said, There are captains here. He said, There are giants here. And my goal. Is not to live here and giants are dwarfed. My goal is that when this conference is over, men that can take the mountains of government, men that can take the mountains of media, men that can take territory systems and handle it as if it's their own child and breathe upon it until the purposes of God find expression, such men rises from here. So that when we come to church, we will not just have cars parked outside. We will have men that will bring constituencies here as an offering. So when they are standing and you look at them, you know that because this man is standing here, 
the parliament is safe because some of the policies they made that favored the church he was the one who engineered it so he won't come to church with a car he will come to church with the witness of the parliament that's when you know an assembly that have stature so that when we come into church there will be certain men that will bring a witness that affects the very foundation of the land and so when they are standing their presence is like the witness of scotland and this the history of this territory cannot be told without them and even heavens we know we know and record it can you lift your hands towards heaven and ask the lord to make you i want to make another call those who want to submit to Jesus completely because those are the first people that the hand of God will come on they want to submit to Jesus completely I'm sorry that the conference is taking a dimension that is not consistent with your expectation but don't worry when I leave you understand why 